Hey everybody, my name is Cassie and today we're going to have some Poke Doodles fun. Let's get started. Today we're going to be making a fun edge to edge shaker card using this adorable Poke Doodle stamp. This is the Winnie Heavenly Snowman. I'm also using blackout ink from Ink on 3. This is waterproof. It is also Copic safe and we're going to be using Copics today. I have my image stamped out on some Mina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock and I have a scrap paper underneath. Okay, we're going to start with the snow. So these are the colors I'm going to be using for the snow. I try to show them at the beginning of the coloring. Sometimes I add in another color later, but I will always show what I add in. We're going to be starting with the C2 marker. This is the mid-tone that I have chosen. When you're coloring white objects, the easiest way to do it is to just color the shadows to give it some form. So I'm laying in about where I want my shadows to be. I'm then going to take my C0 marker, which is my lightest marker, and I'm going to blend those shadows out into white. I'm leaving a fairly large white highlight on this so that the snow looks very bright. But I'm also laying in quite a bit of shadow on the ground to give the snow on the ground some dimension and mass. I'm now going to go in with my C4 marker and go into just the darkest shadows. I don't want to get too heavy handed with this dark color or my snow will start to look gray instead of white. So that contrast is what makes the whites pop. So now I'm going to soften that out with some C2 and then blend that once again back into white with my C0. When choosing my colors for the snowman, I went with the cool grays because it gives that snowman a visually cool fill. This little guy was feeling a little too gray though, so I'm going to glaze in a little B0000, just a little bit into the shadows. Next, we're gonna work on the white trim on her coat and hat. I'm using warm grays for this, so they look warm and cozy compared to the cool grays of the snowman. Because this is fluffy fur, I want to add some visual texture. So I'm gonna add these colors in with dots instead of strokes. I'm starting with my W1, this is my mid-tone again, and I'm establishing where my shadows are. Same way that I did with the snowman, but this time with dots. I'm now going in with my W3, which is my dark color, and continue to add those shadows with that same stippling motion. Don't be afraid to let your dots overlap but you want to make sure that you are leaving some of those dots so that you can see that texture. Moving back to the W1, I'm going to go over and soften some of those deep shadows to help them blend back towards the white. Right now, the white areas are looking very dark, but they will look white once we get the rest of the colors in. Finally, I'm moving to my W00, and again, I'm softening those shadows and blending them towards the highlight of the white. The next thing we're going to color is the skin. These are the colors that I've chosen for her skin tone. You can change the skin tone depending on what you want it to be. I'm starting with my lightest color, which is an E30, and I'm flooding the entire skin with that color. I'm just doing a flat wash. I'm next going in with my E33. This is my darkest color, and I'm establishing my shadows under her hair, under her hat, etc. I'll soften those shadows out with my E31. This is my midtone, so bringing those shadows in towards the middle of her face. At this point, I like to add the cheeks in, so I'm using an R20, and I'm just getting that in. I'll blend all of this together with a final layer of my light skin tone, my E30 going over the entire surface of the face to blend all the transitions of colors together. Moving on to her hair next. Again, you can change these colors if you want different hair tones. I'm going to start with my E47, which is not my darkest, it is my second darkest color. And I'm going to go in with some conservative shadows. There isn't a lot of space to color in this hair. And because I want to put a lot of colors in there because I like the dimension it gives, I have to be very conservative with each of my colors. Next, I will blend that color out with some E57. Again, I'm being conservative. I want to leave a highlight still.
Next I'm taking my lightest color, my E53, and adding that into the highlights. Right now it doesn't look very blended or cohesive and that's okay, I've just been blocking in my colors. Next I'm going to go in with my E49. This is my darkest color. I'm going to add just a touch in each of the darkest shadows. If this is more complex than you like to color, you can stick with a three color blend and skip this E49 step, but I really like the extra dimension it gives. Next, I'm going to move into my E47 and start blending that down. This time I'm being a little bit less conservative and adding more color in there, but I am making sure that I am maintaining a fair amount of highlights, especially on the outside of her face. Moving back into my E57 and I'm going to blend all of that out, leaving just the tiniest slivers of highlights for the hair. And those highlights will get softened with my E53. At this point I noticed I missed part of the trim on her dress, so I'm going in with some W3 to fix that. Next we're going to color the coat and the hat. I've chosen a muted green color for this. Starting with my darkest color, I'm going in with some BG96 and I'm adding in the deepest shadows. So this is underneath her arm, underneath the pocket, places like that. If using the really dark colors scares you, go ahead and be a little conservative this first pass and we can add more later. For her sleeve, I'm leaving a little sliver of white at the very edge of that sleeve so that it is separate from the shadow underneath it. I'm now blending that shadow out using some BG93 and I'm going further into the coat. This is my mid-tone and the base color of the coat. Finally, I will soften all that out with a BG90 and I'm pretty much just scribbling over the entire thing to blend those colors. By really saturating the paper with the ink, it helps all those colors blend together. I'm now going back in with my second pass of the color. So this is my BG96 again, and I'm re-establishing those deep dark shadows. I'll soften that out with some BG93. This time I'm taking that color even further into the middle of the coat. And finally, I'll soften that again with my BG90. By this point, what looked like a hot mess has now blended into a beautiful coat. I'm going to repeat the same process with the hat. Again, I'm leaving that sliver of white right along the back of the hat to separate it from the top part of the hat that's folded over. If you're struggling with Copic blends, one of the problems that I have found for myself is stopping too soon. This is why you often see me running through my range of colors twice. This ensures that I get enough ink on the page that I can really blend those colors. My first pass often looks pretty harsh and unrefined. The magic happens on that second pass when I go through all of those colors the second time. I got a little ink past my line right here, so I'm going to fix that with the colorless blender. This is the zero marker. I'm using the chisel tip and I'm going to start outside of the stain and push that color back in towards the line. I don't want to cross the line, I just want to push that color back towards the line. Next we're going to do the scarf and the mittens. This will be a dull pinkish purple color. I'm starting with my darkest color, my RV95 and I'm adding in my shadows on the scarf and the mittens. I'm also adding in some fold lines on that scarf to make it look like it's bunched up. I will then move into my RV93 to soften that out and bring the main color into the scarf and then blend that together with my V91. This will take it into a very muted tone but it matches the coat very nicely. And just like we did with our coat, we are going to go through the colors once again, starting with the RV95 and working our way down to the V91. To push this scarf back to the pink colors, I'm gonna do a quick glaze of RV10, covering the entire thing with just a little bit of that bright pink. Next, we're gonna do our wings. For this, I chose a single color and the colorless blender. 
I'm going to start with my BG000 and add some color into those shadows. Then I'm going to blend that out towards the edges with my colorless blender marker. This will soften the color and give you a nice transition to white. Bringing back my E49 to do the sticks for his arms. You want to use very, very light pressure to get that very thin line. I realized that I forgot to do her shoes, so I'm bringing back my RV95 and I'm just going to color those shoes in. No need to do all the different colors, it's all in the shadows and can be the dark color. And finally, we need to finish our snowman. So I'm going to start with some W8. I'm going to color his buttons in. Then I'm going to take the colorless blender and lighten just a little dot on those buttons just to give them a little bit of a shine. This will remove a little bit of that color. Carrot nose, we're using some YR68 and I'm coloring the full carrot in. I'm then going to add some shadow with some E08. E08 is very red, so I'm going to go back in with some YR68 to bring it back to orange. But it's a little bit too bright for what I want. So I'm going to tone it down with some B0000 and just do a quick glaze. Because blue is the complementary color of orange, it will mute the color and it won't ruin the tip of your marker. To add sparkle to our snow, I'm taking the Daniel Smith Watercolor Confetti Dot Card Set, which has a bunch of different samples of colors, and I'm going to use the pearlescent white. I'm just going to take a little bit of water on my brush and scrub it over the paint dot, and then add that to the wings as well as the snow. This is a very subtle shimmer, but I love the little extra pop it gives. I'm using some white gouache to add highlights to the eyes, or you could use a white gel pen if that's easier. Now let's take this colored image and turn it into a shaker card. To do this, I am reusing some old packaging. This is that clear cellophane that some of your stamps and dies and other embellishments come in. I'm going to go ahead and cut off this flap that is used to close the packaging. So I don't need that. I'm then going to cut a panel that is a little bit bigger than my card. I want a fair amount of overlap. You should now have a tube of plastic. I'm then going to cut off the sides where it is folded over so that I have a single layer of plastic. And I'll be able to make two shaker cards from this one plastic cellophane bag. Next, working on the back of the card, I'm adding some double-sided tape to all of the four sides. I'm going right up to the edge because I want a good seal along the edges. I'm leaving the backing paper on the tape for now. Once you have your tape on, lay your card front side down on top of that plastic panel that we made. I'm then going to take off one side of the backing tape and fold the plastic over and get a really nice good seal. I also like to give the plastic a nice crease. Now working on the opposite side, of the one that we just taped down, removing that backing tape and folding that plastic over. You want to pull it tight, but not enough that the paper bends or arcs in any way. Now you want to remove the bottom tape, make sure all your edges are taped down tightly, and I add a little bit more tape on top of the plastic that is folded over because you want a good solid seal across the whole piece. So I move the backing tape from those and I fold the bottom up. Again, making sure that your plastic is nice and tight in the front. I'm also going to cut off a little bit of that extra plastic just so it doesn't get bulky in the back. To keep the corners nice and tight, I'm going to add just a little bit of regular tape on top of those corner edges just to make sure everything is completely sealed. We now have a pocket with an opening at the top to add our glitter. Because this is a very thin profile pocket, you want to stick with something that is very thin and you don't need very much. So I added just a tiny bit of glitter to my card 
I then shook it around to see how much that was and it was actually too much. So I shook some of it back out. It takes a lot less than you think it does. Once I was happy with the amount of snow that I had in my shaker card, I turned it back over and I sealed the top the same way that I sealed the bottom. So I removed that backer tape, added some more double-sided tape to the backs of the plastic that's folded over, folded over my plastic and made sure to get a nice seal along the tape. I then trimmed down the excess and taped my corners. You want to make sure you don't have any plastic sticking out over the edge. If you do, make sure you tuck in that corner a little bit more and tape that down. Do a quick test to make sure you're not leaking glitter anywhere and we are ready to move on to adding it to our card base. So I've made a sentiment strip and I have my shaker card and I just have a basic A2 top folding card. I'm going to start by attaching the sentiment strip to the top of my shaker panel using that same double-sided tape we used on the back. I find this works really well to attach my paper to the plastic. I made sure that my sentiment strip was longer than my card front so that I could wrap the sides around the back. This will keep it securely in place. So I lined it up, smoothed it down, and just folded over those edges. To attach this panel to the card base, I'm using the same method I use for all of my cards. I'm using a tape runner to get the edges and a couple stripes in the middle. I then take a liquid adhesive and go right along the edges with a very thin line and a couple stripes down the middle as well. I find that the combination of these two adhesives helps the card really stay together long term. I'm going to press that down and let that dry and we have our edge to edge shaker card. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give this video a like. Also, if there is anything that you want to see, let us know in the comments. If there's a technique or a Pokedoodles product that you want to see used in a video, please let us know so that we know what you want to see. I hope you have a wonderful crafty day and I'll see you soon.